Are you looking for a small FDM printer? Looking around, looking at Prusa and all that? Well, today I'm going to talk about Creality's latest release, the Ender 2 Pro. So join me inside. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said, we are looking at Creality's Ender 2 Pro. This guy is a smaller printer than the Ender 3, and it's a remake of an older one. So the Ender 2 has been out for a long time. As a matter of fact, it's hard to even find a parts for it anymore because it's just been, it's not made anymore. And that's this guy right here. So this is my Ender 2, heavily modded. Um, I actually came by this one second hand, but it's a great little fantastic printer, a small build plate, especially if you're wanting to do small stuff. Well, Creality turned around and this year released the Pro version. All of a sudden we're back to it, to the small printer. Now, we released this in competition to the Ender 3, which is a bit bigger and not as mobile as this printer it can be. So one thing I'm gonna talk about is, if you're curious about the assembly, check out my stream because we did it live. But also, I wanna talk about pros and cons of this printer. What I felt was great about it, what I felt was wrong about it. So this is actually the review, now that I've used it for a week or so, and kinda of done some prints with it. So I wanna take a look at it, and give you guys some true information that I think is relevant when you're considering your purchase, um, if you guys are interested in this. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, that build platform, it is a lot smaller. I mean, this is a small platform. It's it's meant to do small jobs. It's not a bigger printer like the Ender 3. <clears throat> and it's nowhere near in comparison to the CR10. But I just kind of felt like I needed to talk about this one a little bit. It looks like a great little printer. It prints great. I had a lot of fun with it, especially doing small parts and things like that. That's why this guy has been kept around in my shop for so long. It's when I have print jobs with itty bitty parts and lots of them. I don't have to tie up a big printer to print a small piece. That's where the small build plate comes in place. But also if you're doing small stuff like just small figurine, vases, stuff like that, and you don't have a lot of room and you need something that's portable and easy to put away, the Inner 2 Pro is definitely a fit for you. And especially when it comes into the cost of looking at like a Prusa or something like that, this guy's price point is right around 170 bucks, which is not a bad price point. It's well contained. It's meant to be picked up and moved around. They've designed it with the handle. When not in use, you can take unload your filament and the arm will fold in for better storage. It has a lot of good options to it. But there were a few things that I felt fell short on this printer too, and I want to point those out, especially for the price point. Looking at the price point, 170, an Inner 3 Pro is about 190. So roughly 200, so not much more for a lot more build area and a lot more machine. This machine, you have about half the build plate, which is great, but there were some things I felt Crowley probably could have done better with this one that now I'm gonna have to upgrade, and I wanna point those out. First part that I wanna point out, I'm just gonna bring the machine over, is the extruder. We did cheap plastic instead of a metallic, instead of a, this one's an upgraded, you see the red metal mount. Now, granted, where are the filaments going in? They did put a piece of brass to eliminate erosion against the plastic of the extruder, but the plastic extruders, that thing is applying pressure against the filament to get it against the gear to push it through. And I've had these plastic ones snap. I've had erosion, which then drug crud into my Bowden tube and eventually down to my nozzle and messed up my printer and different things like that. So I felt this was a big downfall, but I felt there was another lost opportunity here. This design, I think this arm is great. The way they designed it, it's going in, it's level real good design. It's not sitting up here coming at an angle and doing stuff like that, what you would have with a traditional Ender 3. But the older design, it was on the top. And honestly, if you kept it on the top, turn the arm, a huge upgrade that could have been good for this one, and I will probably do to this one, direct drive extruder would have been good here. 
would have been really good here. Um, for a small size, would have given it more capability because you would have been able to use more filaments. Right now you're stuck to the PLA, PETG, and ABS. Um, you know, having this printer doing small th stuff with TPU, different things like that, could have been a huge advantage and game changer for this printer and the environment. So I think it's one of those things that's important to bring that up. That's Those are the two things that really kind of hit me wrong with this printer and honestly missed opportunities, I think, um, in my personal opinion with this machine. And now it's upgrades that I'm going to have to pay more money for to do it, where by the time I do a lot of these upgrades and stuff like that, I might as well have bought a Focus Odin 5 that comes, it's the Ender 3 size, it comes direct drive, and it has the extra Z-Rod, it has a lot of the upgrades already in place. So, a couple other good things they did here. I love the knob redesign. That was a good one. And I love that they put the belt tensioners on. That's something we didn't have in the older model that makes this one a lot better to use is the belt tensioners that way we can get good tension we don't have to sit here with a pry like we did on this one and try to pry this one as tight and allen wrench it down it's just a simple turn of the knob and you've got your tension which is great on both axes i love the built-in storage on the side for all my allen wrenches and tools that was a great one i do really love this arm and the handle is a great touch i thought this was really well done the gantry it's very tight very easy to work with. The cabling was done really well. So all in all, is it a good printer? Yes. Is it a great printer to start with? Depending on what you want to do, if you're really looking for small, this is a great one. This is a good one. And especially considering the price point compared to a Prusa Mini, it is an awesome little printer for what exactly what it is in this competition market. So keep that in mind. There's nothing wrong with it. And one of the big upgrades over the old Ender 2 is this used to have a three-point leveling system. Really kind of a bear to level it out with three points because this one goes back to the traditional four-point. There's four knobs under the bed to do leveling and it makes it a lot easier to level this machine. So definitely keep that in mind as you consider these machines. Um, it is definitely a huge step up from the old version to the new one. And if you guys want to see upgrades done to this one, definitely let me know down in the comments below because the extruder mount, I'm going to change that. That's just a given. Um, I don't like working with the plastic ones anymore, especially since I had one snap and I, I just don't trust them. Uh, metal, the aluminum ones are the way to go. So um, all in all, it is a really well built machine. I have had a little trouble with slicing out of Cura. I don't know if it's a firmware issue, but I threw an Octoprint on there and boom, it started eating my files. So maybe an SD card issue. I don't know exactly what's going on there, but hey, it's, it's a good machine. I really do like it. It's making a good addition into my shop, especially as some of the projects I'm working on has little pe a lot of little pieces. This guy's getting going to get a workout um, and help out this old girl. So I hope you guys enjoyed the content. hope you found it relevant. Um, again, would I purchase this printer again? I'd probably just buy another Ender 3 for $20 more um, on Ender 3 Pro or Ender 3 because the build plate area is great, um, but also while it is a magnetic bed, I prefer glass. It's just me, although I am kind of having fun with the magnetic bed lately. Um, I just have to work on my profile, and that's one thing that I'm still having to work out is my profile settings for it. It's being a little bit quirkish compared to my other printers. So all in all, good printer, great design, good design. Could be better, but it's a good printer. So if you consider it, keep what I've said in mind. It's a grain of salt. It's my opinion. No one's pushing me to put this out here or making me do it. So if you guys enjoyed the content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and we will see you guys in the next video. Um, if you have any questions about the printer, leave comments down below. And also, you know, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join us as we keep working through all kinds of new stuff. I appreciate everybody showing up today. If you have more questions or stuff you want to see on this printer, definitely let me know. Thank you guys. See you in the next video. If you guys are doing model builds and stuff and get tired of the X-Acto knife, the Citadel mold line remover, I love this tool. It is sharp enough to peel plastic off of a model, but it won't 
cut you. It'll leave marks, but it will not break my skin. But it'll cut right through a taped box. Uh, it's great for removing uh, if you're doing a model kit and you've got the where the sprue connects and you got that little burr. It's great for getting those off. But it's just an awesome tool. Um, I'll put a link in the description for it. They're a little expensive, but it's a lot better than cutting your hand with a hobby knife. All right. Oh, you caught me at hello. $10 off your next inland filament purchase. Oh, they know me too well. Uh, Cause yeah, that's my, that's my preferred PLA is inland. So that's just awesome. All right, let's see what we got. Of course, the most important thing is the instruction manual, so you guys can kind of get the first picture look there. So the build to this in my is very similar to what I would think of a Prusa. So uh, let's get in here and look at the goodies. So they sent a little bit of filament. Usually they send like half a spool. So that's different. So we've got some filament to try out. Believe, don't worry, I have plenty downstairs. All the tools we need to assemble, the declogging, unclogging needle. Honestly, I don't even use those. Uh, we've got the thumb drive, spare parts, nozzles, all the goodies. And one thing that I love that comes with every printer is it the same style or did they finally improve those? Nope, same snips. But they're still good snips. My only problem with these is the handle wears out and the metal comes through, but other than that, they are good snips. So we got some goodies there. So we got the filament arm that... Looks like it just locks in place together. Awesome. Nice offloading arm, so that's pretty cool. All handy and very much required power cord. Got our control screen. So that looks like one internal unit, that's nice. I like the knob. That is very nice compared to others. Uh, yeah, that's basically that the equivalent is about the same size as a Prusa 2 Mini. Let's get this layer of out of here. Hope I got all the parts. Now here's the bad boy itself. And don't worry, the box will be departing shortly. Okay, I see what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to set the box on the thing off screen here and bring this up. There's one thing I liked in the CR10 V2 and those newer, the Max and all that, is they made the wires disconnected between where you could disconnect. And the Ender 3, it's not. And it doesn't look like they did it on this one either. So we got our handle that goes on top. got our tower with our x-axis and y-axis arm and our our z-axis rod and everything our step and our extruder which very much looks it is not a direct drive extruder so it is a standard extruder boo I was really hoping that would be a direct drive and it does look like it is a, it's a nice hot end. So let's get this guy kind of situated here. The way we would actually see this. So the bed size, same equivalent as the original Ender 2. Uh, it's a magnetic bed it comes with. Um, 
So that's going to take a little getting used to for me because I prefer the glass beds. And I bet I could steal the glass off the other one, but, you know. <laughs> uh, let's see here if anything stands out. Love the built-in storage drawer. That's pretty cool. Um, honestly, I probably will hide a Raspberry Pi in there. Kind of move the axis back here a little bit. All in all, it is very basic. They moved the card reader into the base here instead of it in the display casing. This guy looks pretty neat, actually. It looks nice and clean. So let's get this guy put together and fire it up, shall we? And yes, I read the instructions. Um, it's not going to replace the one I had. Um, this one's going to augment. Uh, believe me, I have enough print jobs. Um, like I have the ongoing project of R2-D2. Uh, small parts, very much lots. This printer is going to get a get a workload with those small parts. So um, it's not replacing anybody. It's just another addition. Uh, it's printer number fifteen in the uh, in the in the scope of things. So I've got. M4 by 16s are what I need. And for a printer this size, for this printer, uh, retail is 169, uh, which is not bad at all. But if you've been watching Micro Center, they've recently had a coupon out. I don't know if it's still valid, where people were getting the Ender 3 for like 100 bucks from Micro Center, that there was a $100 off coupon. Um, which is insane. It's a good, the Ender 3 Pro is a good machine, even though it's behind, behind in models, because we've got the Ender 3 V2 out there. But it's definitely something, if you're interested in getting started in that coupon, I don't know if the coupon's still valid, uh, but if it's still out there and you're looking for a printer, definitely go check in on that one. So these are M4x16s, these are M5s, I'm a little scared where those big guys are going to go, but we're going to find out. So, but for the base, I need the M4s. I love that they sent a good assortment of Allen wrenches. And different sizes. I do miss the older ones that they used to ship this with that used to have the rounded so you could be at an angle and still be bolting. These are just straight ons. Um, I wish they would go back to that but I also know supply and demand is probably a reason why they're not doing that anymore. Uh, Douglas, you are completely correct. Uh, some of it is patience. Um, you get started and you're like, oh, this project's going really cool, but I have to wait till it's done. That's what got me. And now it's just kind of a, it's a game of, uh, what printer do I use to get this job done as fast as I can so I can move on to the next job? Because I'm one of those right now, I am full bore with my print. I think I have one printer, other than the one you saw that I took off the desk, I think all but one printer has been full bore running right here lately. My CR30 is very much working on the uh, R2D2 project that's coming up because when the wife asks for a 3d asks for a specific 3d print she gets what she asks for because my wife rarely asks me for anything um i love her love her to death and when she asks me for something i make sure it happens so 
Uh, and just so you guys know, if I haven't talked about it, it is a life-size and probably going to actually work R2-D2. Uh, well, let's put it this way, two-a-day models. I've got, you've seen the list of just one set that I sent you. Uh, I got models filling up, model kits filling up, and 15 of these in the house. And if you're curious about seeing the shop, go check out the video on that. I actually think I do it twice, because I did the first time I walked through the shop. I built the shop, and then I remodeled the shop, as because we kept getting more printers. Um, and, uh... Yeah, <laughs> we have uh, definitely been adding uh, more hardware into the shop. Now the next two bolts are going to go up into that beam right there. I have a feeling that's my two, uh, yep, the M45s are going to go right up in underneath the carriage here, which are these two big bolts. I'm going to get them bolted up in there. <laughs> I've seen the unicorns. I have not done one, but I have seen them. All right, let's get these bolts in there. Now, one thing to keep in mind if you're assembling a 3D printer, and this is a trick I've learned, especially when two bolts are going into like this arm, don't just tighten one then do the other. Give each one a little bit. Uh, both of them probably have the resin ones. Uh, and my resin printers actually changed because I used to have two Illigoo Mars printers that I sold and and because uh, I was just getting too many printers and resin is not my favorite thing but uh, it is something I it's a necessary evil in this because <laughs> um, I've got one resin printer that just is not cooperating right now um, that I'm working on which is my Photon Mono X I've gotten some beautiful prints out of it but it has been one of the more quirky of my printers um, if you think about hopping into resin into resin I recommend the Creality Halet and the uh, Voxlab Proxima. Great starting machines. Yes, their print area is little, but you can do really cool stuff with them if you, with them, and kind of learn the basics before you step up to a big printer. Um, that's what I did with the Ender 3 before I stepped up to the CRs. Because uh, let me tell you, that CR10 Max is a beast of a printer. We are bolted up. Uh, the miniatures, uh, I would say stay with resin. You can probably do it, but you're going to get cleaner and higher detail with a resin printer. Uh, I haven't looked at Prusa for resin printers, to be honest with you. Um, most of the ones I have right now are, have been uh, sponsored, so... Uh, I've kind of just stuck with what's been sent my way and I've been extremely happy with them. Yeah, get in there. Um, they've worked extremely well. Uh, I'm really impressed by the, uh, the Halet one and the Proxima and the older Creality LRD002, LR002, is it LD? Yeah, LD-002R. That guy, those printers just work. <laughs> I have been highly impressed with them. Okay. That is not the right Allen wrench. You gotta get the right one. Get this control arm, or get this filament arm on here. Arm. The 
handle. So in a way, just kind of looking at this printer, I think they did their intention with this one was to keep it portable. Um, I'm a little depressed by the extruder. I really, I really kind of wish that had been a direct drive. Uh, I think that an opportunity has been missed there on that one. A direct drive would have been a very, very good move for this model. But the way the arm is sitting out here to hold the filament, it would not have it would not have been copacetic for a direct drive. Um, direct drive. Um, if you guys are curious, uh, the direct drive is really good for additional filament types like uh, TPU, which is kind of like a nylon. It's basically you know your stress bars, stress balls. It's uh, basically that. I I'm digging the red and black with this one too. It is uh, definitely a departure from their black and blue that they would usually do um, with their printers. Um, I definitely see the cost savings with this one because I'm already seeing upgrades that I'm going to have to do here. Like this plastic extruder amount, that's going to go. I, I won't keep that. I'll swap out to the all metal Creality. Even though they have put a brass fitting in here, to help keep the erosion of the plastic against plastic. The plastic ones tend to weaken and break real easy. So that is one thing I will definitely be swapping out the metal, um, which is, it's like a $13 upgrade. Their switches seem really good. Um, sometimes I've found bad ones of those. Um, I love that they put a belt te tensioner on this one so that we can get good tension on the, on the extruder belt. Um, that is a great addition. So there are a lot of great things about this printer. I love the storage cabinet built in. The way things are put here looks beautiful. Um, now we gotta wire it up. <laughs> this is always the, uh, the fun part that you can miss stuff real easy. So up here, I'm basically just checking the wiring, making sure everything's plugged in, which extruder, uh, Z-axis mo or X-axis motor, everything looks good here. The switch is connected just fine, so that all looks good. But down here, <clears throat> and that arm is going to be right in the way. So actually, I'll screw it. So right here, we got the stepper. The stepper motor is not plugged in, and the stepper switch is not plugged in. So we'll get those plugged in so that the Z-Rod will actually work properly. And it looks like our motors back here are fine. The stepper motor and switch are all plugged in. Those look good. All right, everything looks kind of good on that end. And we'll get this guy screwed back in. I do love that they gave this kind of some swing. That, that's kind of a nice thing because I can swing it and put the condense the printer for better uh, storage. So that is a nice feature. So wiring all looks good. So now we got to wire in this guy. So we'll get the control panel. We'll get him plugged in. And... tape back we'll get this guy in his slots we'll slot him home all right so that's looking good got it good and connected and now at this point it's adjustment so we're done with the instruction book we're actually gonna get this guy powered on we're gonna power him on for a little bit make sure everything looks right then I am gonna set this guy aside so um, the reason why I'm going to set it aside is one, I'm going to plan on doing a, hey, we used it video, but two, I, I'm not going to use this. I see a tangled, horrible mess right here, and I don't have a normal spool up here because my expectation 
from Creality was the half spool that we would normally get with an Ender 3 or CR10, and we didn't get that. So I'm going to be uh, have to wait to actually power her on. And I don't see a switch for voltage. Um, a lot of times I would expect to see a 115 or a 230 volt switch. I don't see that on that this machine, so hopefully it's just a 110, or we're going to have other problems. But let's get her powered on. Well... <laughs> That's scary. Uh-oh. This is the fun of when you think you know what you're doing. All right. Oh, because there is a switch and I missed it. Okay. So by default, these printers there it is. It's hidden right there. Uh, by default, these printers are shipped out set to 230. You got to switch them back to the 115 if you're in the United States. And unless you've got a got a 220 watt plug that you're putting this guy in. There we go. Uh, two a days for this little guy. There's not a lot to put together. You go for an Ender 3, you're going to be putting it together for a little while. So there we go. We are powered on. And let's see here. I'm going to auto home it. So we'll have to level the bed and all that jazz. But she lives. I know there's a glare on... Let me see if I can do something about that glare on the screen. I know you guys can't see the screen very much. I've just gone in to move, move it to auto home. So just kind of sitting here listening to it. I already can tell I'm going to want to swap out some fans, quiet it down. Uh, it's a little loud for my liking, but it's going to go down in a shop with 10 others. It's going to be fine. So I've got the SD card. Plug that in. Let's see what we got on the card. And it's got the USB port, which is great if you want to hook up like a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint to control the printer, which I will probably do. Um, I've got one down there that I will probably use. So we've auto homed. And if we want to level. Uh, let's see here. And I want to preheat for PLA. So it's going to heat up the nozzle so I can level this bed. Now, they made a crucial change here over the old Ender 2. The old Ender 2 had 2 and 1, which made it really hard to level the bed. This has the 4 bolts, which is really good. And just kind of one of those things. Uh, this is going to heat up to 200 degrees on the nozzle. The bed is heated, which is important for a lot of 3D printing. But all in all, for Creality, for $170, this is not bad. It's a small little machine. It's meant to compact, fold up, and be stored away um, when you're not using it. So it's definitely a good machine for like a part-timer. The print area is little, so if you're doing, you know, like you see me printing these big ships, this isn't going to work. This is going to be too small. But if you're doing small prints, like some of the Pokemon figures and stuff like that, you can still print a very tall, narrow item. So kind of keep that in mind uh, as you kind of work through this one. It does kind of allow you to, uh, to have some kind of cool, fun stuff. But... Definitely a good one. You can pick these up at Micro Center. Uh, they did have them on Amazon, and of course the Creality sites are out there. Um, if there is an Amazon link, I'll put it in the description in the morning. 
Um, some of them have not. This guy has not been on Amazon, at least where you can catch him. 